Welcome to Dog House. So today I'm going to start on a new project, another charger project, to be a part of my collection. This particular one though, I really hadn't thought about doing until just recently. I was watching the movie Christine and I saw this beautiful 68 charger. And I, I remember that part in the movie, but um, until I saw it again recently, I thought, wow, that thing is absolutely gorgeous. So I decided I'm gonna build Dennis's 68 charger. Now I'm gonna use the uh, Revell kit, the two-in-one kit. What I really love about this kit is it's fairly inexpensive. Well, <laughs> considering it's now out of production, but uh, if you can find them, uh, which you usually can find them on eBay, they're, they're fairly inexpensive. And it comes with two engines. It comes with a, uh, a beautiful uh, 440 that you can use to uh, do all sorts of really cool things. This particular one is, is going into another one of my charger kits. And it comes with a, a nice 426 Hemi. Uh, comes with a few extra parts that are, uh, are really cool to, to hot rod it up. The only problem is with, with this body that is with the kit, I'm going to have to put a vinyl top on it to simulate uh, Dennis's car. And I'm going to have to find the original blue paint that was, uh, that was on his car. And I think I found a source for that locally here. So uh, stick around and let's see how Dennis Gilder's 68 Charger turns out. Well, here's the kit. I think it's the best Charger kit on the market, if you can find it. Um, they do have, Revell Germany has released it in a uh, little bit different box art. But it's the uh, same thing. It's got the uh, 426 engine and the 440. And I went ahead and started to build this 440 to use it in another project and have decided that uh, I'm going to use it here instead. So let's go. Which I actually have here from the 1968 Charger kit engine here for Dennis's Charger. I wanted to go with the 440, but again, had a little bit of uh, customization. So I'm going to give it some chrome valve covers and a high rise intake manifold and a Holly carburetor. So unfortunately, I don't have chrome valve covers for this particular engine. So I'm going to have to make my own. And how I do that is I've got these uh, 440 valve covers here and I'm going to give it a coat of Alcad
need to put those on my now I have some options as far as the carburetor to put on this 440 and you'll see here is the stock unit that comes in the kit um, it's not bad but it's not fabulous um, this is a resin holly that actually there's a chunk out of this one but I do have others uh, I could use this holly which um, looks pretty decent the only problem is if I put an air cleaner on it, um, you won't get all the detail that's down inside. So we'll we'll have to see what I decide to do there. And then there's this option here, which I do kind of like. And this is the, the Carter carburetor. And this is very similar to the, the Carter 625 competition series that I used to run on my 440 back in the day. And it was an excellent carburetor. I got excellent performance. And uh, we'll see, I'm kind of leaning towards that one right now. As far as a manifold goes, uh, so here's the one that comes in the kit. Uh, it's, it's a great rendition of the stock manifold, but definitely not where I want to go. I was looking more towards a custom aluminum, like a holly type manifold. Uh, what I'm doing now is I've put a block of styrene on the top of this particular one and this this is a little bit different design than this one as you can see I'm not sure what kit this came from but it's different enough that I think I'm gonna go ahead and customize it just a little bit and see if we can come up with a nice uh, Holly performer look uh, something you would have had or a, a street dominator I think is what they called them back in the early 80s and the performer came along uh, in the mid 80s so we're going for that nice 19 early 1980s look so uh, let's see how it turns and out. I've given the entire engine a coat or a, a wash of Larry's bath water so you can kind of see that it's a little grimy looking not a whole lot just a little bit on the alternator we painted a metallic red in the veins there to simulate the um, the copper wires you would see in these Chrysler alternators and put an orange color on the oil filter again to make it look like a Fram oil filter mm, all in all I'm happy with the results that simulated high-rise Holly manifold didn't turn out as good as I wanted it to but it'll work for my purposes and I went with this competition series Carter carburetor. Now I just gotta find an air cleaner that I think is appropriate for it. Anyway, I'm gonna call it done until I can wire it up and it'll be a while before I can uh, get around to doing that. Anyway, uh, here's a better look at the engine on the right with its simulated chrome valve covers and a little bit of grime and another 440 that I had done with the velocity stack there on the left. Anyway, we're going to move on now to the uh, vinyl top and then the painting. To mark the approximate area where I'm going to put the... Well, I don't know what they are called. It's just it's where the vinyl top overlaps. Um, and I'm going to use some half round um, styrene. And what I'll do is I will just put it on here and I will glue this down. Okay. And that's where I'm going to start. And then, of course, I'll put the, uh, the trim along the bottom here and along here. So stay with us and you'll see how I build a vinyl top. So after everything is glued on, I'm going to tape off the sides of this vinyl top and in, down in the middle I'm going to put several coats, uh, five or six coats of primer to kind of build that area up. The reason for this is the center part of the vinyl top is definitely a, a thicker area than the, than the sides and so I'm trying to simulate that and I think, I think we did a pretty good job of simulating that here. Well now we are ready to paint the vinyl top. I've got everything masked off that I want to have masked and we're ready to go. And what I use is this Rust-Oleum multicolor textured paint. Um, this is kind of a gray and white speck and it doesn't really matter because we're going to be painting over that anyway. So get it ready and here we go. Just light, light shots on this. 
I'm not trying to put a lot of paint down, just enough to cover. This stuff is quite thick, so it will give me a nice uh, vinyl top look and texture, as you will see later, but I do not want to put too much of it on. here and see Let's see here's a little spot I got to get right in there I've never tried to decan this and, and try it that way kind of afraid to <laughs> so um, I think I need to go a little bit right up there okay you can see it's getting a little runny in some spots. So put a little bit too much in some places. And I want to try and move it around just enough where those runs aren't going to build up on the edge too much. So I still have to take that tape off at some point in time. I think I got a little booger right there, but it'll be fine. Things will work out with it level itself out just fine this is a great paint that tends to um, give you a texture even though right now it it doesn't uh, doesn't have a texture to it it certainly will here in a few minutes when it dries so there's that step so I let that dry overnight and you can see I have a nice texture the little area here that we had a little booger uh, it, it even dried out um, I might have got the paint a little bit thin right through here that's okay, there's still, a, there's still a texture there. So I think overall, uh, we did okay with the, uh, uh, with the base coat for the vinyl top. Now, I can paint over this any color I want. I could do a white, um, I could do a brown, or I could do a black. And for this project, we're gonna have a black vinyl top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some of the Mission Models uh, black primer, believe it or not, it's a great paint. It works on so many different things and it leaves just a little teeny, teeny bit of a sheen, which is exactly what I'm after for this vinyl top. So we've got it mixed up here in the gun and let's get it sprayed. Well, I've taken the tape off and you can see that it's pretty much dry. There's one little spot that's just kind of finishing up there on the top. But uh, just kind of a light gloss to it, very, very low sheen, which is what you'd want for a nice new vinyl top. Uh, I think it turned out pretty, pretty darn good. Quick, easy, and I think it looks pretty darn good. It's too bad I don't keep this car white because, man, that sure would look awesome on there. But we actually have other plans for this body. So for this project, we're going to use a paint by a company called Scale Finishes. You can get them online at scalefinishes.com. They're local here in uh, the Salt Lake area. And these are actual automotive paints. This particular one is Dodge B7, not B5, but B7 medium blue. It's a gloss enamel, and it's pre-thinned, and it's ready to go. So first off, we're going to mask the vinyl top, and then we're going to spray the entire body with a Krylon uh, red oxide primer. I'm going to spray the valences and some of the other parts, and uh, well, so far I like it. think it uh, sprays pretty well. I'm going to put about four coats on the body, and once that's dry, I'm going to use my Molotow pen to uh, do the chrome all around it. I really like this paint. It dried fairly quickly, um, within just an hour or so, and it has a great shine to it. I haven't had to buff it or do anything to it, and I think the body turned out great. So stay tuned for part two.